Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave, and in today's video, we're gonna play with some Marks trains. So while I'm relatively new to running Marks trains, they've been a presence in my life for as long as I can remember. This one sat on a shelf for many years with the tender and a bunch of freight cars, and I always just really liked it, but there wasn't much I could do with it, because it's wind up. And no matter how much you wind it up, it's not going very far. And what it does, it takes off and then slows down to a crawl and stops. So for me, the interest of actually running it, it's not that great. But at some point, I don't know how many years ago, I found that red one with a, with a motor in it and it still runs pretty good. So that's what started me off on my Mark's obsession. So it's been a while since I've run any of my Mark stuff, and considering that I've never really serviced any of it other than the motors and the engines, they needed a little cleaning. So what I did was this. I cleaned off the axles for all the cars, lubed them, and put them back in. And I'll show you how I did that. Uh, I also added weight to the engines because, as you may know, all the stuff is so light that a little bit of extra weight really does help. And you'll see how many cars this one's pulling. It's really kind of necessary. So I'm gonna show you how I clean the axles. Uh, I'm also gonna show you a little something about uh, coupler adjustment. Also switching out the frame if you want to change either the color or if it's rusted and you wanna you want to swap in a different frame, I'll show you how to do that. And also adding weight to the engines. So let's take a closer look and run some trains. For the most part, I've found that there are two different bases. The ones with the couplers that are held in place by twisting the end, and the ones that are held in place by being riveted to the body. The ones that have been riveted to the body, usually you don't need to do much with. These, on the other hand, can be a problem. Sometimes can get stuck as it goes back and forth. You might be able to see it's kind of sitting at an angle, and when it, it will bind like that and derail the train. What I've been doing to remedy that is I'll remove the wheels, take a pair of long nose, and straighten out the bend. And then pull the coupler out. Uh, you can see it's not particularly straight. So I'll straighten it out. A pair of pliers. It does not need to be perfect. These are pretty forgiving trains. If you just do a couple of the maintenance items, they will pretty much run without a problem. So I straighten that out. I'll put it back in and feed it through the tab there. And then instead of twisting, what I've been doing is just grabbing the end and bending it at a 90 degree. And from the ones that I've done, I've noticed that it fixes that problem where it kinks to the side and causes a derailment. This works a lot better. Uh, this car actually has two different ones. You can see this one's got an indent in there that holds it in place, so I'm not gonna bother with that one. The wheels just slide right off the axle, unless the dirt is holding them in place. Just take a little squirt of WD-40, or you can use something like the Lebel 107, uh, but I figured this will be fine with WD-40. And then just clean off the axle ends. See how dirty that is. And again, you don't need to be too crazy about it. Just a little bit of maintenance. Slide the wheels back on and give them a spin. When they do that, they make that noise, they're not spinning great. This is when I'll use the label and I'll just put a drop of oil on the axle, put the wheel back on and spin it. You can see how much better that is. Before you put them back on, take a look at the sides. You can see this one's a little bent. Try to straighten them out a little. You can use a pair of pliers if you like. and then put the axle back in.
Now, I'm sure there's an infinite number of variations on these cars, but these are the three different types that I have. Most of the ones I have are the solid bodied black framed cars. And this is one of the solid bodied red frame cars I have. Then I've got this car with the open windows and the black frame. And I believe that this body with the open windows was from an illuminated set, uh, which obviously this car body is not. Now for this car, you can see it is not in the best condition. I don't really want the red frame on here because I don't have any others. I, I think the red frame was probably from a slightly higher end set. I'm not collecting these for the value of the cars. I'm collecting them because I like running them. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap out this red frame for a black frame. Get yourself a screwdriver and locate the six tabs underneath and just gently pry them up. There should be three on each side. And it's entirely possible that you break one of the tabs doing this. So just be careful. And once they're straightened out, you just pull the base off. Nothing's damaged. I can always put it back together if I want. I I can sacrifice one of my tank cars. So to put it back together, you just line up the tabs as best you can. I usually go one side first, and then the other side and just squeeze gently until it pops together. And then just push the tabs back down. And if you think it's something you might take apart again later, just bend down two of the tabs. It doesn't need to be super secure. So these wheels need to be lubed. So I'm gonna do that and then get it on the track. This is the engine I used to pull the train. Obviously it's seen better days, but I got this for like $10 at a swap meet. So I'm pretty happy that it just works. But what I am gonna do right now is take the motor out. It just comes out with one screw on either side. After you get those two screws out, it just comes out. And this engine, the light bulb is fixed to the engine boiler, but you got, they've got a quick release here. You just press that in and remove the wire. Now, one of the challenges with these engines and the trains in general, is that these pieces are very light. And while this engine has a decent amount of weight to it compared to the cars, I think it could use a little more. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more weight to this engine shell by applying one of these stick-on weights used for automobiles. I wiped down the inside of the shell. I'm just gonna put this in here and see how it lines up. I don't really want it sticking out the back there. So I'm gonna break off two squares. So I'm just using one and a half ounces of weight, but that's really enough to make a difference. Line it up so it's at least roughly in the middle. And I'm just gonna press it and hope it stays there. I mean, these adhesives are pretty strong uh, and these weights are a little flexible. So I'm hoping that they're really gonna stick to the top and that, that does feel significant. You know, there's a good bit more weight to it. And to put these types of engines back together, the back of the frame has this notch in it, and that slides over this part of the engine shell. You line it up, push it backwards, and then just adjust it forward slightly to get the screw holes to line up. And once those two screws are back in, just make sure the motor doesn't pull out. So I've added some weight to this and cleaned all the axles on the cars. So what happens next? We run them. One of the things that can derail your Marx trains is the couplers. When I apply pressure, as if the train's pulling, the coupler height changes, which this way is not a problem, but if I had put the tender through the top of the engine coupler, when the engine pulls, 
it wants to pick up the front of the tender. So if that happens, you're going to have derailments. So what you wanna do is make sure that when you pull, that the front of the car in the back doesn't get lifted up. And you can go back through your train and do that for every car if you need to. Or you can just wait till you have a derailment and then check out your couplers.
I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.